thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that we stand in your presence. Lord, we thank you that you are perfect in all of your ways. Lord, you're perfect in all of your ways to us. Jesus, thank you. Lord, as I speak, Lord, I just pray that you would use my words to encourage the downtrodden, to encourage the broken heart, to encourage the person that maybe today feels battered and bruised by life. Lord, I pray that you would use my words to help shine a light for us as we move through seasons of life in the future. Your word stays true. We can hold fast to it in good times and bad. And Jesus, today, thank you that you are going to illuminate people's paths today with your way, your perfect way. And everybody said, amen. Well, you may be seated. You know, I just love singing the song that we just sang. You are perfect in all of your ways. And do you know what I love about being a follower of Jesus? What I love about being a Christian? What I love about serving God is that we can sing and hear about God's perfection, hear about God's ways, but he doesn't leave us floundering in the dark concerning his ways. He doesn't leave us wondering what his ways are, but he provides us with a guidebook the Bible that we can use to navigate through any circumstance and any situation that we come across in our lives. You know, and this morning, I want to maybe just give you a few words to encourage you. Maybe for some of you, it will be a word that's going to encourage you for where you are now. And maybe for others, it's going to be one of those words that you're going to take hold of and you're going to pop it in the shelf. And pop it on the shelf for the time when you need it. But whatever it is, I just pray that we would open our hearts to receive God's word. And it's simple. And do you know what Dave said to me yesterday? He said, Faye, do you want to preach tomorrow? And I'm like, didn't say anything. I'm thinking, I've just been packing like for a two-week camping holiday. It's not like pam- p- cap- um, it's not like packing like when you go abroad to Spain. That's easy, isn't it? Shorts, t-shirts, dresses, that's it. When you go camping and you go camping in this country, it's a bit more of a process because you have to ca- pack for four seasons. Okay, so I've got winter coats, I've got raincoats, I've got flip-flops, I've got wellies, I've got tracksuit bottoms, we've got dress we've got jumpers, we've got everything because you just don't know what beautiful weather system you're going to encounter on our great British shoreline. So when Dave said to me, would you like to preach tomorrow? I'm thinking, babe, I've been doing this like, and the kids are home from school, so I've been looking after the kids as well, and I just stayed silent. And he said, well, Faye, if you can't preach, it's fine because, uh, you know, I've got a word, uh, you know, I I can go through stuff. And I was like, great. So I just didn't say anything. So I went to bed and I didn't think about anything because, of course, just before I was getting into bed, I remembered my house insurance is due up when I'm on holiday and I forgot about it. So last night, that meant I was sorting out the house insurance so that my contents were insured when I'm away on holiday because that's really important. So I went to bed thinking of nothing, thinking Dave is going to sort the day out. And then I woke up for my five o'clock wee stop. (laughs) And as I went towards the toilet, I was like, oh, Lord, I'm just so sorry. You know, I just, no time, no time to prepare, no time. You know, I'm so sorry, Lord. I just can't do it. I said, I haven't got anything to say. And he gave me a scripture like that. And I was like, okay, Lord. And it's a really simple scripture. And I want to encourage you, and I'm going to read it maybe from a few translations. And the scripture is from Proverbs 17, verse 22. And it says this, A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. You know, there's another um, version in the Amplified, and it says, A happy heart is good medicine, and a joyful mind causes healing, but a broken spirit dries the bones. And the New Living Translation states it like this. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. You know, and I just believe today, and in line with what's really been happening, 
I believe, you know, it's great to say that God's word is a, a light into our path. But do you know what? Sometimes there comes a time where we've just got to do what it says. You know, when you may say, but Faye, a merry heart, you don't know what my situation is. You don't know what people have said. You don't know what's happening in my situation. I can't have a merry heart with what I'm going through. I'm suffering loss. I'm suffering things, and I can't do it. But I want to encourage you today to say, you can do it. You can do it. And I know sometimes it's contrary to what you feel like doing. But do you know what? We're really good at having a number of conversations, and we can pick what thing we want to do. This is my conversation two days ago. I really need chocolate. I really need chocolate. We haven't got any in the house. Do I have chocolate? Do I ask Dave to get chocolate for me? Do I not buy any chocolate because that would be the wiser thing to do? Or should I have chocolate? My body was saying, Faye, actually you don't need it. And looking at the size of me, you really don't need it. And you know that you're trying to make good decisions for your health, you don't need it. And another thing was saying, but Faye, you want it. And I was like, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? I was like, Dave. Can you go and get me some chocolate, please? <laughs> See, I had the voice of reason speaking to myself, but I completely chose to ignore it because I want with the other voice. It's exactly the same in your situation. You may say, but Faye, I can't because I feel. But actually, the voice of God is standing right next to you and saying, but do you know what? Yes, you can. Can it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience? It says, be of good cheer. The Bible says to be of good cheer. The Bible says not to lose heart. I was reading these scriptures today. Count it all joy. Be of good cheer. Don't lose heart. A merry heart doth good like a medicine. And do you know what? If you look at the situations surrounding any of those scriptures, none of those situations are like being on a beach shunning yourself in Mauritius. Okay, all of those situations are actually, it's not like be of good cheer because things are going well. Don't lose heart because you're doing a really great job and everyone's loving you. It's not saying count it all joy because you're about to get promotion. That's not where those scriptures are talking about anything. Do you know what? In the midst of adversity, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of things, that is where those scriptures that is where those scriptures are birthed, which means for us we can have confidence because it means that there are people that have gone before us that have walked a path similar to ours and they've taken heart and they've taken heed to what the Bible says and they said, I am going to do this. I am going to do this for my life. Just like Pastor Ray said today, Paul shipwrecked. He didn't expect it, but oh, do you know what? We can boast in the Lord. We can magnify his name. We can give thanks in all things because this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. You know, the Bible says in Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I just want to encourage you from the word today. You can do it. I want to be like the cheerleader up here today to say you can do it. No, your emotions may not feel like you can do it, but do you know what? It says, let us magnify the Lord. The Bible does not say in a difficult situation, let's magnify our emotions. It says, let us magnify the Lord. It does not say, trust in myself with all my heart and lean on my understanding. No, that's not what we can do. Well, you can do it. Actually, you can. There is a choice. And many people actually probably do the scripture I just said. Trust in myself with all my heart. I will lean on my understanding for this situation. And this is the way I will outplay it. You know, the choice is really simple and open before us. We can lean on ourselves. Or we can choose to follow the wisdom from the perfect one. We've sung and declared it. You're perfect in all of your ways. But the thing is, is God's ways aren't our ways, like we all know. And we have a choice to make when we come to a crossroads as to what are we going to do. Am I going to trust in me? Am I going to be the ultimate authority for my life? Am I going to allow the way I think 
and the way I feel to dictate the way I'm going to react in a situation? Or am I going to say, God, this is how I'm feeling. I'm not excusing or ignoring the feelings, but the truth of your word says this. And I'm a Bible person, and I'm going to follow in your footsteps because as I've sang and declared so many times before, you are perfect in all of your ways. You know, it's really, it's simple, not simple. (laughs) It's like the book is there, and it's full of wisdom. But the not simple bit is that we've got to do it when we don't feel like doing it. But what I love is that God doesn't hide the right way from us, even though he knows we'll probably kick and scream trying to do the right way. But he says, look, I set before you. He sets before us all a greater way, the best way. And you know what? He does only set before us the best way. But he says, I'm not going to leave you on your own in doing it either. But I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you one that's going to help you. You know, you read, you know, in Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. You know, we read that. But you know what? This is where God comes and says, I can give you this in the midst of. We read it and say, oh, this is on the good day like. This is, the, this is the fruit that I bear on the good day. No, this is the fruit that you bear in season and out of season. Whether you're in winter or you're in summer, this is what God lays out for us. He lays it out for us and he says, come on, come on. I want you to have it. I want you to live in the fruit of what I've given you. And sometimes that means that we've just got to say, no, I am not going to lean on my understanding. I'm not going to lean on my authority, but I am going to take what I think and I'm going to go to the Bible, which means we're going to have to open up the Bible. Do you know what? We're all at different places in life. And for some of you, you are just embarking on a brand new journey with Jesus. And it's an exciting time. For others of you, you have been a Christian's years. But if there's one thing for myself and for yourself, if we can encourage ourselves and make it a practice, is to take hold of what God's Word says and lock it in our hearts. You know, I know it's so easy to lock a whole lot of other things in our hearts. I know it's great to see what the latest Instagram or Facebook feed is seeing, saying, and I know it's what's going on in OK Magazine, who's getting married this week, who's going up. But do you know what? Take time to lock God's word in our hearts because he's not hiding it from us. But we've just got to go and look to see what it says. I was reading in Proverbs 25 this morning, And it just talked about don't lose, don't betray somebody's confidence in the middle of an argument. What wisdom. Proverbs 25, and I'm just thinking, God, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for reading humanity's mail, knowing that in the midst of things, all sorts of things can come flying out of our mouths. But you just point us on the right direction and say, do you know what? In the middle of an argument, don't lose some, don't let go and un whatever I just said, lose somebody's confidence. Don't do it. You know, but you think, this is treasure. This is treasure. We save all year for our holidays, for which I am going camping straight after the service, and I'm excited. But do you know what? I want to make sure I'm saving up a deposit of rich Bible word in my heart as well that will see me through all sorts of situations. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage myself that I'm not going to lose heart. Do you know where that scripture, where it says about losing heart, is found found in 2 Corinthians 4. I'm going to read it to you from um, the New Living Translation, just so you can kind of see the context of things here. We are pressed on every side by troubles. For some of you today, that's where you are. But listen, but we are not crushed. 
We are perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We're hunted down, but I'm never abandoned by God. We got knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And then it says in verse 16, that is why we never give up. Or the another translation, that is why we do not lose heart. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. For we don't look at the troubles we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. They'll last forever. You know, the fruit of your choice, your decision, will go on to have, uh, it will carry on reproducing itself into the future. You know, here it's talking about suffering, suffering for Jesus. You know, the things that the disciples went through in order to proclaim Jesus, the sufferings that they endured. But yet they said, do you know what? This is all temporary. We're fixing our eyes and our gaze on Jesus. You know, I want to read you another scripture where it says in John 16, 33, when I said to you earlier about be of good cheer, okay, this is the scripture that it comes from. These things I have spoken to you that in me you will have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, or another translation says troubles, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, so when it talks about in Proverbs 17, a merry heart doth good like medicine, when it says about counting it all joy, when it says about not losing heart, it's really important that we examine the way that our heart is in relation to how we're going to deal with things. You know, and so it's not a normal thing. When you're going and being battered, it's not normal. But do you know what? Do you know what you're doing? You, when, you, when you say, I count it all joy, it's like you're looking at what God's already accomplished. Okay? And that's why the Bible encourages us time and time and time again. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. That's what the Bible says. You know, Thessalonians 5.17, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. Colossians, let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. You see, when we say, I'm not going to trust in me, but I'm going to trust in you and acknowledge you. What we do is we say, God, I don't know where I'm going here, but what I do know is that you are faithful to your word. What I do know is that your promises fail. What I do know is that you're the creator of the heavens and the earth. And if you've got Paul out of trouble before, if you've got Paul and Silas out of a prison before, then God, I can't wait to see what you're going to do in my life and how your will is going to be accomplished in me. You know, we don't have to magnify our situations, but we put our boast in magnify the Lord. You know, and even if you're on a mountaintop, please do not put your situation higher than God. Make sure that each day you do what the Bible says and you give thanks. And you say, God, you are good. Your word endures forever. You know, Colossians 2.6 from the TLB translation says this, and now just as you have trusted Christ to save you, trust him too for each day's problems. Live in vital union with him. Let your roots go down into Christ. Down into Christ, not down into Instagram, not down into the BBC News, but down into Christ. Let your roots go down into Christ and draw nourishment from him. Where are we drawing our nourishment from? The Bible says that we can draw nourishment from God. We will all draw nourishment from somewhere. Let's think about our friends. Let's think about the people that we surround ourselves with. You know, what is the report on our lips? Are we negative? Do we, are we critical in heart? Do we always find a problem? 
You know, I don't see in my Bible that that's the way that God says that I should live my life. I read that I'm an overcomer. I read, be of good cheer. I read, let not to gossip. I read about speaking words of life and encouragement. I read about all those things. And you know what? For me as a Christian, I think, Lord, I want to live my life like that. I don't want to be the mumbler, the grumbler. Oh, it's going to rain today. Like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. I can only see. Do you know what? Do it if you want to do it. Do it. It's absolutely fine if you want to do it. But do you know what? For me, I want to be like Tigger. (laughs) Boying myself through life on the promises of God. I want to find good things to look at. Because I want to fill my word with the life and the truth of God's word. And so I want to encourage you today. Evaluate what you say. Evaluate what you draw your nourishment from. Evaluate the people that you've got circling around you. And if they're not helping cheer you on in life, then maybe it's time to make a change. Maybe it's time to say, do you know what? I know we've always talked this way because like we're besties. But I'm not really sure it's the best way. It's been our way for a long time. But I reckon we could go to a whole new level as besties. And we could maybe change the way that we speak. Because, you know, we do tend to have a little gossip about people sometimes. And actually, the Bible says that it's wrong. And if the Bible said it's wrong, let's not do it. I find it really easy with the Bible. Because it says, yeah, like, just don't do it. So then, like, let's not do it. Or the Bible says, do good. Well, let's do good then. You know, I don't know anybody who has been brought, well, I I don't know anybody that's drawn to Jesus because we're moaning, complaining, we're overcome, we're downtrodden. Yes, join the Christian faith. This is what your life is for. But do you know what? When, When people see us in situations going through a tough time, but they see that we're buoyant. They see that we that there's life in us. They see that we're still saying good things. They see that we're talking good about people who are maybe not talking so great about us. You know, we can choose the way that we live. We can choose the words that we decide to declare over a situation. So let's just choose words of life. If the Bible says that power of life and death are in the tongue, then just choose life. We get to choose life. Nobody is forcing you or me on how to live our lives. We get to navigate this. And I'm so grateful that God's word illuminates the path. You know, talking about trials, talking about storms. If you think about in Luke chapter 8, when the disciples went to cross the other side with Jesus, Who would have thought? You know, like they didn't know the storm that was about to come upon them. You know, as they were stepping into the boat, Jesus wasn't there saying, boys, got the life jackets ready? Okay, so what we're going to do, just in case, like, there's no drill, right? Line up, boys, here we go. Life jackets on, and the waves come, and deploy, and the life jacket goes up, and then we're going to do this, and we're going to be fine, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to row in time. He does none of that. He does none of that when Jesus starts saying to the boys who are going over to the other side, listen, they're going on a ministry trip. It's not even like they're going on holiday. Do you know what I mean? You think if I'm going to do something for Jesus, surely he's going to make it easy. He don't do it like that. He don't do it easy. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's easier than others, but there's just times. There's just trials. You know, and I look at at my life and the things that have happened to us. Do you know what? Dave and I have been through plenty of lovely trial. One of them was on holiday. And just before we went on holiday, we had that lovely encouraging scripture from James that you think that you're just reading because it's a lovely scripture. Where it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Thank you, Lord, for that wonderful scripture that we've received, Lord. We count it joy as we go on holiday to France with our children, not having a clue what was ahead of us, 
not having a clue how our holiday was going to unfold with three children. So it went a bit like this. We get to France, things are going well. Daniel's able to go to a, a little play club, so we send him off. Dave and I are with Eden and Sienna. Summer's not born yet. We're playing. He comes back. I want to do this. And we're like, no, 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 we're going to go on a bike ride now. No, 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 I want to go swimming. No, we've been waiting for you for ages, and we're going to go on a bike ride now. Oh, do I have to? Yes. <laughs> right, come on, let's have lunch before we go. I'm not eating, says Daniel. Okay, well, you can go hungry on the bike ride. If you, you know those kind of lovely moments where you're trying to create a memory, and there's so much resistance to the memory that you're trying to create? Hop on the back of my bike, Daniel. I will cycle us, and your father will get the girls in the trailer. So we're cycling along this little path, and we don't know where we're going because we're in France, but, you know, it's kind of okay. There's not many cars where we are. We're in rural France. And I see a little path, so I said, oh, let's go down here, Dave. Go on then. So we start cycling and it starts getting a bit muddier. Like Dave's a good cyclist. Like I'm not a good cyclist, okay? So like I'm a bit avert to kind of anything that looks a bit like scary. Like when Dave goes down hills, he goes down hills. I'm like holding to the brakes like this because I, I don't need adrenaline. I'm happy living life without an adrenaline rush. Don't put me on a roller coaster. Don't put me in a fast car. I'm good at 30. I really am. I'm happy without the adrenaline rush. So anyway, we're starting to go down this path, and it gets a bit boggy, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't quite know what to do here, you know. So I'm like, oh, Dave, we're going to have to turn around and go another route. No problem, he says. So I get off my bike and start wheeling the bike back. But I'm not really an expert on weight distribution with a child on the back of the bike, in the car, uh, in the bike seat. So anyway, as I'm wheeling it back, my attention is on the saddle, which is where Daniel is, and I kind of let go of my handlebars. So what happened was the handlebars flipped to which the bike f like just like, well, jettisoned itself off, off my hands, basically, and fell on the floor, but Daniel's in there, and he's like this, and his arm gets trapped under the seat, and he actually snaps it. Oh, you can imagine bad parent now. No, we are going on a bike ride, Daniel. Get on the back of the seat, Daniel. And now I'm looking at my son with a snapped arm on the floor, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord Jesus. So anyway, Dave's like, okay. Right, so anyway, I can't remember what we did. The girls kind of trusted, one of them trusted me to put them on the back of the seat so Dave could wheel Daniel in the trailer. We had to go and find a hospital, and of course they don't speak French, but I speak GCSE French. <laughs> now, I don't like using it often, but I was able to say to the nurse, un vélo, ah, like that. And we got seen to. <laughs> and then we got held in the queue because everything looked okay. So then I had to go and I went, eh, eh, like that saying, like, because Daniel's not feeling well. So she was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So anyway, they rushed us because at this point they didn't know what was wrong. They rushed us to x-ray and they like, he snapped his arm in two places and we are going to have to rush him to the nearest city. Um, in order for him to have surgery because it's quite a bad break. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, gosh. So, you know, uh, shorts and little vest top, and Dave's got the girls, and I'm in the back of an ambulance ringing the travel insurance because, of course, you need your travel insurance to make sure it's going to be covered. And do you know what we got there? And uh, amazingly, there were surgeons on hand and everything, and they operated on him through the evening. And, you know, that was that. He came out of hospital the next day, and we were like, oh, okay, the count is all joy. Right, well, Lord, we thank you, you know, that you are Lord in this situation here now. And, you know, you begin to do that, and you're saying, do you know what? We can still have a good time. Jesus, thank you that you made a way, you made a provision for us and all of that. And you think, oh, it'll be fine. We had to kind of adapt what we did on holiday, but we made the best of a made the best of a bad situation, and on we went. So then we're leaving to go home from France, and we think, Lord, you have been faithful to us as we've watched our son undergo surgery in a foreign country 
Thank you so much. And we're just pulling up to the um, San Marlo, ready to catch the ferry home. And we had a few hours to spare. So we said, oh, let's go into the little, um, the gated area or the walled area of San Marlo, which is a beautiful, beautiful little town on a hill, all stone. So anyway, we were trying to find a parking space and we couldn't find one. And we started twisting around this winding street and like this is really steep hill, like a really steep hill. And as we're coming to the top of the hill, Dave said, look, there's a parking space. Now, if it had been me, I would have wandered past it because the other thing I'm not very good of, I'm not very great at bike riding. And also I never learned to reverse park during my driving lessons. See, because I was quite good at learning to drive, so my driving instructor said, okay, we'll just book you in for a let, um, your test. And the test came. And he said, oh, we haven't done a par reverse parallel parking. You'll be fine. I'm like, okay. He said, you've breezed everything. I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So um, we had to do it. It's like, oh, yeah, this is the one thing we can't do then. So anyway, to, for my driving test, I just prayed they didn't ask for the maneuver, which they didn't. And I passed my test. And 20 years on, I you know, can't parallel park. But anyway, so as we're driving on, Dave sees this space and he's brilliant. He said, I can get into there. I said, go you. So in we get and he's like going up and he reverses into this really tight space and behind us is like an Audi and then there's like an MR2 and then there's this rather really stunning vehicle. And at that point we had our Fiat Multipler. So we were looking the bee's knees in amongst all of these very designer cars. So Dave um, turns off the engine and pulls up the handbrake and the handbrake snaps. Dave, you said, I can't take my foot off the brake now, Faye, because we're going to crash into all of these designer cars going down. I said, what do you mean? He said, the handbrake has snapped. Ah. Right, what should I do? Get the kids out of the car would be the first thing. So I'm like, come on then, children, we're just going to go and have a look at this building over by here. So they're like, why are we getting out? Well, you know, let's just, dad's just going to tinker in the car a bit and we're just going to look at this building. So anyway, I get the kids out of the car and I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, I do not need an insurance, car insurance claim, as well as the health cover bills that we're about to receive. And I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, please help, please help. And I don't know how Dave did it because he literally had millimeters because he's a really good parker. He, I'm bragging it up, but he was a good parker. He got in. So we had no room to maneuver this car out. I don't know what he did, something about accelerator and clutch and a, a diesel and it idles in any way. He managed to get it out. So we're like, God, you are so good. You are so good. You have diverted us from another disaster. We will park in a car park on the flat. And we thought, right, we're just going to have to not tell the ferry company, because we were on the fast craft, not tell them that the handbrake is broken until we're in the boat and there are other people behind us, so it's not possible to ask us to get off the boat. So this was the plan. So we're like, right, we'll do this, and then they will have to make it a way for us. So sure enough, that was what we were planning. So we went and parked anyway, had a little look around San Marlo, and then we had about half hour to go, so we thought, okay, let's leave the car park now, ready to go onto the ferry. So, you know, thank you, Jesus, you've helped us in this holiday. Thank you. You know, we are just keeping a right heart here, counting it all joy, because we've fallen into this trial. And then as Dave is driving out at the car park, he didn't see this massive concrete block. <laughs> off the car and popped the tire, <laughs> right? So now we're like, right, what are we going to do here? We've got two weeks of holiday on top of the spare tire, which you have to access from the boot. Of course you do. And we've got half an hour and not enough time to do anything. So it's like, it's okay. We will go limping quietly. So literally, he Dave did. I mean, he's brilliant. He breaks all the rules. I love him because I'm such a rule keeper and he's not. And he's like, so he's driving to the ferry port, like with this tire that's deflated. We're on three tires. The bumpers ripped off. I got my son in the back with a broken arm and the handbrake has just snapped, right? No joke. So we managed to get there and we're like, what are we going to do? 
Anyway, somehow we managed to unpack the car from inside the car because that's what you can do with a Fiat Multipler, may I just say. One of the perks of a Fiat Multipler is you can fold down the seats in the back and begin doing this and then get to the car. So <laughs> this is what we did. We put the spare tire on and away we went and we hobbled the car onto the ferry, not telling them anything. I think they could see by the broken bumper and the little tiny tire and the car like this. But anyway, we drove smiling on and you know, and you kind of, and then as we get out, uh, yeah, my husband just can't get out actually at the moment because he got his foot on the brake because the handbrake's just snapped. <laughs> and they're like, okay, so they get the straps and everything like that. And they literally strapped, strapped the car to the ferry. And I was just reminded, thank, can I just say, we're going on holiday today and we've not had such a scripture. <laughs> so I am praying that it's going to be a good holiday. But anyway, I say this to say we all sometimes face these things. And this was one of these situations where God had illuminated the path before us with a scripture. And we would have never have seen that coming around the bend, just like the disciples would have never thought they would have been drowning at sea, trying to go on a missionary trip as the storm is kind of cascading and waves are cascading over a boat. But I say that to say, Dave and I and my family are still here to tell the story. And do you know what? When God's word illuminates you and says, count it all joy, at that very moment, we had a very real decision that we had to make as to how we were going to deal with the situation that was unfolding in our lives. And we decided, God, you've given us this word. We know your word. So to Lord, we are going to make our boast in you. And we are going to thank you that you are good at all times. You are a good, good father. We thank you, Lord, that you can make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, and today we will magnify you because you are so good. And I want to encourage you today, going back to the scripture that the Lord gave me this morning at five o'clock when I said, sorry, Lord, I can't say anything. I haven't had time to prepare. He reminds me of the scripture, a merry heart doth good like medicine. Consider the condition of your heart. God wants our hearts not to be, like it says here, a broken spirit. You know, life, it's easy to be broken by life. Circumstances that people face, that you may be facing, is so easy for our spirits to be broken, for our hearts to be heavy. But God's word to us today is that, yes, yeah, situations may be tough. It may feel like things are overwhelming. You may feel like the disciples in a storm being battered by the wind and the waves. You may feel like you've been persecuted and you don't even know what you've done. You've got your family turning against you. And yet it's easy for our hearts to be crushed by life. But I'm so grateful that God says that for my life and for your life, we don't have to allow our hearts to be crushed, to be downtrodden, to be broken, but we can seek refuge in the shelter of his wings where we can say, God, I will make my boast in you. I will keep my heart. Lord, I won't lose heart. I will be of good cheer because I know that you are the God that rescues. You are the God that never fails. You are faithful to the end. Lord, we can do this. We can do this. You can do this. If you need a message today to encourage you, God wants you to know you can do it. He wants you to know you can make it through. Encourage yourself in God. A merry heart. A heart that's full of joy of gladness, not because of the situation you're in, but because of the God that you know that's in the situation with you. So right now in this place, if you're here, you know, or maybe you feel like you've had one of those, I don't know, seasons where it feels really tough. I just want to encourage you. God is not going to let you down. And he gives us his word to illuminate our path 
to say, don't lose heart. Be courageous. Be of good cheer. Because he is going to make a way. You know, maybe you're here for the first time. Maybe you've been in church before. But maybe you've never made a decision to ask Jesus to be like the captain of your life. Well, right now, I want to give you the opportunity to do that. I've been a Christian since I was three. And I can honestly say, I don't know how I would have ever navigated my life without Jesus. You know, he's the one that's there 24-7. You know, and he loves you so much. He loves you that much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross because he wants you to be his. And you know, asking Jesus to come alongside you in life is really easy. It's just a Jesus. It's just a Jesus. Will you have me? Jesus, I want to accept you into my heart. And right now I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you're in here and maybe you've never prayed a prayer like that before, I want to encourage you. It is the best decision you will ever make. Asking Jesus to come alongside. So you can repeat a prayer like this after me. Jesus, thank you for who you are. And thank you for what you did for me. I never realized that you were a God of love who wanted to walk through life with me. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart today. Forgive me of all the things I've done wrong. And I want you to walk through my life each and every day as I walk into the future. You know, if you've prayed that prayer right now, you can just lift up your hand in the quietness this moment. There'll be people looking. We just want to give you a Bible to help you on your journey with Jesus. So if you said that prayer, you can lift up your hand. And you know, if you're not sure, I would encourage you at the end of the service, we'll have one of our team members stood at the back with a Bible. Go and grab it. Go and see what it has to say. We'd love to chat with you. But I just want to encourage you today that God has got a good plan for each one of us. And his word illuminates and helps us through every situation in life. So be encouraged. God never leaves us. Amen.